one of the things we want to do in this course is expose you to some <clears throat> new types of functions. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to look at something called hyperbolic functions. And uh, granted, these functions may not be used quite as often as, you know, trig functions or exponentials or polynomials, uh, but they are important and they do show up, you know, from time to time. Uh, they're used in a lot of engineering applications and uh, things of that sort. Uh, so even though they're not the most common in the world, we still want to kind of expose you to them, you know, show you how to take their derivatives and uh, more, more than anything, just make, make sure you know they exist or, or even just have a basic understanding of, of what they are. So uh, <clears throat> hyperbolic functions, we're just going to start off very light in this video. Uh, we're going to walk through a lot more of the details in, in the videos after this one. But, um, but in this video, we just want to kind of get across the, the basics of uh, hyperbolic functions. Uh, there's really six main hyperbolic functions, and they kind of follow the six basic trig functions. There's a hyperbolic sine function, a hyperbolic cosine function, hyperbolic tangent, etc. There's hyperbolic function versions of each of the regular trick functions. So uh, let, let's just take a, a quick look at, at what these guys are. Um, if we take, uh, for instance, hyperbolic sine of x, we'll, we'll focus primarily on that one in this video, then the way we write that is we write s-i-n-h, s-i-n-h. That's the little expression that means hyperbolic sine. And yes, I know we put the h at the end, but we say hyperbolic first. That's just kind of the, you know, the way we do it. Um, of x, so this is still a function of x, and just by writing this, it, it would make you think that this is very, very much like a trig function, perhaps. Well, it's the strangest thing. This guy is not defined in terms of any trig function. Here's his definition, uh, which might leave us scratching our head a little bit. It's defined as e to the x, e to the x, minus e to the negative x minus e to the negative x all divided by 2 all divided by 2 very strange very strange uh, that's completely understandable um uh, we'll talk about why they're written in terms of trig function or like trig functions in in just a second um the hyperbolic cosine function so hyperbolic cosine looks like this uh e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2, okay? And I think for this video, I'll probably just stop with hyperbolic tangent. We'll, we'll try to go through some more detailed examples of all of them here uh, uh, in another video. But the definition of hyperbolic tangent is to take hyperbolic sine of x and divide it by hyperbolic cosine of x almost resembling like tangent being sine over cosine, okay? But I can't stress this enough. These are not trigonometric. They, they're not periodic. They don't repeat like cyclically, like sine goes up and down and up and down. And uh, in fact, they're defined by exponential functions. So it seems very, very odd that we would write them in terms of uh, sine and cosine and tangent if they don't resemble trig functions whatsoever. Uh, so I've got a lot of little questions to answer. Let me, um, let me start by answering that one. I'll start, why, why are these really truly exponential type graphs? Why are they written with this notation? Well, we won't be able to fully unpack that in this video, but, but I'll give you a little nudge in the right direction. Um, treat this just as some generic function, and we'll, we'll actually work out the algebra in another video, but call this guy like f of x, for instance. Just forget this notation, don't worry about that, whatever. Just treat this as some function. And I want you on your paper to go find f prime. Go find, take this guy's derivative. It just has exponential terms. We can clearly do it. Uh, it's not a hard derivative at all to take. And I'm just curious, just see what you get. And, and we'll, like I said, we'll unpack this a little bit later. But hint, hint, I mean, you can probably start to guess where I'm going with this. Um, the derivative of hyperbolic uh, sine of x probably closely resembles or is the um, hyperbolic cosine function and vice versa. So that would be a, a very strong tie if the derivative of one of these in some aspects resembled the other. That, that would be very interesting. 
very interesting relationship. Okay, um, now let, let me address another uh, question. What are these? Like, why do we need to know them? What are they used for? Uh, here's just one interesting place. There, there's obviously other places, but um, he, here's here's just one just to kind of whet, whet your appetite a little bit. Let's look at... Um, uh, let, let's look at hyperbolic cosine here for a moment. All right, um, if we're going to look at a graph of hyperbolic uh, cosine, think about what happens. As the x's get larger and larger and larger, like out here, notice how this term is going to decay off e to the negative x. That's going to basically dwindle to zero. And so if that becomes negligible as the x's get really large, you really get e to the x over 2 e to the x is exponential growth and dividing by 2 is not going to do a whole lot it might flatten it out a little bit but not not dramatically it's still going to be exponential growth and so the um the right hand side will look some, something roughly like e to the x basically all right now let's um let's take this guy away let's um let's remove this one let's see if i can delete this without deleting e probably can't oh, it did it worked okay um, let's consider what happens as we look in this direction for large negative X's this term will decay off because you have e to a large negative number it's very close to zero and so you basically get the e to the minus X function and it looks something kind of like this sort of uh, symmetrical right um, and again the divided by 2 doesn't do a whole lot well, it turns out this shape right here, this is this is called a catenary. Catenary. And it it's actually shows up a lot in physics. If you uh, hold something uh, like a chain or a rope by two points and let it hang in the middle, you've probably seen this uh, either, um, you know, I, I don't know, just think of anywhere like in a restaurant or a museum where they've got two poles with a chain hanging in the middle of them that shape this made just by the natural gravity pulling the the chain down is called a catenary and it's modeled by the hyperbolic cosine function it's very interesting uh, that you can model these things uh, by a mathematical function and it turns out to be this guy it's not a parabola it's not like x squared because uh, it's a little flatter than that uh, the exact shape that it makes is called a catenary um, another interesting place um, I'm sure we've all seen the uh, the uh, the big arch in st. Louis the gateway arch is turned upside down that that's actually uh, a hyperbolic function as well uh, that's the the model for that uh, structure as well so these guys show up in a lot of different um, physics type you know applications engineering applications so they are used um, anytime you have cables or or anything of that sort that are hanging or that are loose you'll see these guys show up so I've got a lot more I can say um, we're gonna have to have some videos on how to take their derivatives what their relationships to one another are but um, this was intended just to be a very light introduction to um, to hyperbolic functions and so uh, you can go and watch some of those other videos now and we'll get into a lot more of those details